People of science say that it proves that all things on earth are connected with each other. But only those who will venture to discover and explore can find out an answer. This is Earth and Life Science 11. I am Teacher Rex, your teacher on air. But before we start our lesson, make sure that you have the following module, pen, and your notebook or paper. Are you excited for a fun learning session? Great! We have two lessons for today's session. The hydrometeorological hazards and marine and coastal processes. As we go through these lessons, you are expected to attain the following. First, identify places in the Philippines that are prone to hydrometeorological hazards. Second, explain the importance of identifying places that are prone to hydrometeorological hazards. Third, describe how marine and coastal processes result to coastal hazards. And the fourth one is explain how coastal erosion, submersion, and salt water intrusion occur. Now let us check and ignite your previous knowledge regarding the lesson. So are you ready? All right, let's start with question number one. What is the highest signal number that can be found on Pagasa's revised storm warning system? Letter A, 3. Letter B, 5. Letter C, 7. Or letter D, 9. The correct answer is letter B, 5. Number 2. What is the English term for bagyo? Letter A, storm. Letter B, typhoon. Letter C, thunderstorm. Or letter D, tropical depression. The correct answer is letter B. Typhoon. Number three. What is described as the region of the calmest weather at the center of tropical cyclone? Letter A, I. Letter B, inner bands. Letter C, eye wall. Or letter D, epicenter. The correct answer is letter A, I. Now let's proceed to number four. When does the southwest monsoon usually occur in the Philippines? Letter A, March to May. Letter B, July to December. Letter C, October to March. Or letter D, June to September. The correct answer is letter D, June to September. And the last item is number 5. Number 5, which region in the Philippines is the most exposed to tropical cyclones? Is it letter A? 
Region 1. Letter B, Region 5. Letter C, Region 3. Or letter D, Region 11. The correct answer is Region 3. Awesome! You did a great job! So now, are you ready to learn? Great! Now let's go to the lesson proper. The Philippines has a tropical climate. Annually, the country is visited by an average of 20 typhoons, 5 to 9 of which are highly destructive. The Philippines is situated in the Pacific Typhoon Belt. Thus, the country is highly prone to hydrometeorological hazards. Oftentimes, multiple hazards occur simultaneously. What are hydrometeorological hazards? Hydrometeorological hazards are hazards brought by extreme meteorological and climate phenomena that includes tropical cyclones, monsoons, floods, and water spouts or ipo-ipo. Let us now discuss tropical cyclone. What is a tropical cyclone? Tropical cyclone is a rapid, rotating storm originating over tropical oceans from where it draws the energy to develop. It has a low pressure center and clouds spiraling towards the eye wall surrounding the eye, the central part of the system, where the weather is normally calm and free of clouds. Did you know, in the Philippines, Japan, and China, the tropical cyclones are known as typhoons. Meanwhile, in the North Atlantic Ocean and Eastern North Pacific, they are called as hurricanes. The top destructive typhoons to ever hit the Philippines are Typhoon Haiphong in 1881, Typhoon Haiyan, or known as Typhoon Yolanda in 2013, Tropical Storm Thelma, known as Yuring in 1991, and Typhoon Bofa, or Pablo, in 2012. Do you remember Typhoon Bofa or Pablo? It was the strongest tropical cyclone on record to ever affect Mindanao, making landfall as a Category 5 super typhoon with winds of 175 miles per hour or 280 kilometers per hour. It had its landfall at Katiil on December 4, 2012. Let's move on to discuss about monsoon. What is a monsoon? A monsoon is a seasonal wind and rains pattern. The word monsoon, believed to be originated from the Arabic word mausim, which means season. There are two known monsoons in the Philippines that occur every year. Southwest monsoon or Habagat brings warm, moist winds from southwest, causing rains over the western portions of the country from June to September. Amihan or Northeast monsoon comprises of cold winds from the northeast that brings rains over the eastern side of the country from October to late March. Let's proceed to flood or in Filipino term, baha. 
flood is an abnormal progressive rise in the water level of a stream that may result in the overflowing by the water of the normal confines of the stream. A flood can vary in size, speed of water, and duration. Now let's discuss water spout. What could be the difference between tornado and water spout? A tornado or buhawi is a narrow, violent, rotating column of air that extends from a thunderstorm to the ground. Meanwhile, a water spout or ipo-ipo is a column of wind rotating over body of water. It descends from a cumulus cloud. It is associated with developing storm systems and thunderstorm. And now, it's activity time! Turn your modules on page 8 and read activity 3, Identify Me. What you are going to do is simple. Familiarize yourself with the hazard maps found in page 7 of your module and answer the given questions. First, identify the places in the Philippines that are both prone to typhoons and floods. Justify your answers. And question number two, what is the importance of using hazard map? Here are the hazard maps on page seven. The shaded portions of the map indicates areas which have higher risk to typhoons. The numbers in the shaded portions correspond to the listed provinces on the left side of the map. And now, it's break time! After a short break, we will check your answers in the activity. Don't go away! We'll be right back! The Radio Z Escuela Program of the Division of Davao de Oro is being brought to you by Nueda Builders Construction and Supply Incorporated Maverick Builders Incorporated, Mitch Construction and Supply, Archicons Architectural Construction and Supply, DB Construction and Supply, Hanawai Builders Corporation, Phoenix Corvada Tagum Gasoline Station, Master Construction and Supplies, Mackenzie Builders, GP and H Construction Incorporated, Metro Gear Construction Corporation, NEN Builders and Development Services Corporation. Max Maze Enterprises Incorporated, We Inc. Construction Company, Rangai Construction and Supply, East Sussex Enterprise, WM Construction, Councillor Boogie and Miss Marjorie Vertodazo, Icon Builders and Supply, and Apex Mining Company Incorporated. And we are back. Are you done with the activity? Brilliant. Now let's answer it. According to the hazard map, the top provinces at risk to typhoons are Cagayan, Albay, Ifugao, Sorsogon, Ilocos Sur, Ilocos Norte, Camarines Norte, Mountain Province, Camarines Sur, Northern Samar, Catanduanes, Kalinga. Pampanga, La Union, Nueva Ecija, Pangasinan, Masbate, Tarlac, and Western Summer. Further, the other hazard map shows the top 10 flood-prone provinces. These are Pampanga, Nueva Ecija, Pangasinan, Tarlac, Maguindanao, Bulacan, Metro Manila, North Cotabato, Oriental Mindoro, and Ilocos Norte. Now for the question number one, what are the places in the Philippines that are both prone to typhoons and floods? According to the hazard maps given, 
The places that are prone to typhoons and floods are Ilocos Norte, Pampanga, Nueva Ecija, Pangasinan, and Darla. For the second question, what is the importance of using hazard map? The answers may vary, but here is a sample answer. Hazard map provides important information to help people understand the risks of natural hazards and to help mitigate disasters. Were you able to answer it correctly? Very good! Now let's proceed to activity time. This time, you will be answering activity 4 entitled Complete Me. So what you're going to do is read the following statements, complete them by filling in the blanks with the correct term or phrases. Is it clear? Alright, let's start. Statement number one. Seasonal wind and rain pattern phenomena are referred as blank. What's your answer? Yes, the answer is monsoon. Statement number two. In average, blank typhoons visited Philippines every year. What could be the answer? Correct, it's 20. Statement number three. In the Philippines, tropical cyclones are popularly known as blank. The answer is yes, typhoons. Statement number four. In 1881, the deadliest typhoon ever hit in the Philippines is blank. What is the answer? Yes, the answer is Typhoon Haiphong. And the last statement, the most flood-prone province in the Philippines is blank. The correct answer is Pampanga. Have you answered it perfectly? Very good! Since we are done with the hydrometeorological hazards, let us now proceed to marine and coastal processes. The coast is one of the most dynamic parts of the Earth's surface. It contains some of the world's sensitive and threatened ecosystems such as mangroves and beach forests, seagrass and coral reefs. The dynamics of the marine environment result to different processes that affect human communities and organisms in the coastal ecosystem. Some of these processes result to natural hazards. Marine systems are referred to as the world's oceans, while coastal systems refers to the interface between oceans and land. Extending seawards to about the middle of the continental shelf, and inland to include all areas strongly influenced by the oceans. About 23% of the world's population live within 100 kilometers of the coast and about 10% live in extremely low-lying areas. Now, let's do our first activity in our second topic. The word decoding. 
which can be found on page 5 of your module. Do you follow? Good! What you are going to do is to rearrange the jumbled letters and identify the term being referred. Are you ready? Alright, let's start! Number 1. This are caused by the gravitational pull between the moon and earth. These are caused by the gravitational pull between the moon and earth. The given letters are E, I, T, S, and D. What word could it be? Yes, the answer is tides. Number two. They are formed by the wind and storm in the ocean. They are formed by the wind and storm in the ocean. The given letters are S, W, V, E, A. And the answer is Wait, you got it right. Number three. This is caused by the melting of glaciers and iceberg. This is caused by the melting of glaciers and iceberg. The jumbled letters are E, S, A, space, E, V, L, E, L, space, E, S, I, and R. What is the answer? Yes, the answer is C, level rise. Number four. It refers to the motion of the outermost shell of the earth. It refers to the motion of the outermost shell of the earth. The given jumbled letters are S, A, C, U, R, L, T, space, N, T, E, V, M, O, M, E. What is the answer? The answer is crustal movement. Alright, let's proceed to number 5. This is the rising of the seawater due to atmospheric conditions. This is the rising of the seawater due to atmospheric conditions. The given letters are R, M, T, O, S, space, U, R, E, G, S. And the answer is... Storm Surge Now what have you noticed about the terms used in the previous activity? Actually, those are all marine and coastal processes. The scientific field dealing with this process happening in our major oceans and seas is what we call oceanography. Coastal processes include waves, tides, sea level change, crustal movement, and storm surge. Let's discuss all of this on the next slides. 
Let's start with waves. Waves are caused by the movement of the air masses in the coastal environment. Now, we have the tides. Tides refers to a very long period waves that move through the oceans in response to the forces exerted by the moon and sun. Tides originate in the oceans and progress toward the coastlines where they appear as a regular rise and fall of the sea surface. Or in simple terms, tides are caused by the gravitational pull between the earth and the moon. Another is sea level change. It is a result of the rise of ocean water which can be attributed to the melting of glaciers or iceberg in the polar regions. And we have another which is the storm surge. Storm surge refers to the rising of seawater due to changes in pressure and wind associated with the storm. Lastly, we have crustal movement. Crustal movement is caused by the motion of the oceanic and continental crust of the earth. The different coastal processes described may result to coastal hazards. Coastal hazards are physical phenomena that expose the marine environment to risk of property damage, loss of life, and ecological degradation. Coastal hazards include coastal erosion, saltwater intrusion, and submersion. Coastal erosion is the loss or displacement of land along the coastline due to the action of waves, currents, tides, wind-driven water, or other impacts of storms. Salt water intrusion Salt water intrusion is the induced flow of seawater into freshwater aquifers, primarily caused by groundwater development near the coast. And lastly, we have submersion. Submersion refers to the movement of coastal sediments from the visible portion of a beach to the submerged nearshore region of the coast. We will discuss more, but for now, we will have a short break. But before we go for a break, kindly turn your module first to page 10. Take a look at the concept map for the continuation of our discussion. Don't go away, we will be right back. The Radio Z Escuela program of the Division of Davao de Oro is being brought to you by Nueda Builders Construction and Supply Incorporated, Maverick Builders Incorporated, Mitch Construction and Supply, Archicons Architectural Construction and Supply, DB Construction and Supply, Hanaway Builders Corporation, Phoenix Corvada Tagum Gasoline Station, Master Construction and Supplies, Mackenzie Builders. GP and H Construction Incorporated, Metro Gear Construction Corporation, NEN Builders and Development Services Corporation, Max Maze Enterprises Incorporated, We Inc Construction Company, Rangai Construction and Supply, East Sussex Enterprise, 
WM Construction, Councillor Boogie and Ms. Marjorie Vertodazo, Icon Builders and Supply, and Apex Mining Company Incorporated. And we are back! Are you still there, students? Good! Are you ready to continue learning? Yay! Let's proceed! Now, let us look at the concept map on page 10. There you can see the map shows the relationship between marine and coastal processes. At the top, we have marine and coastal processes. Below it are processes such as waves, tides, sea level change, storm surge, and crustal movement. These processes have environmental effects that may result to coastal hazards such as coastal erosion, saltwater intrusion, and submersion. Did you get it? Very good! Now let us summarize the main points of the lesson. First, is ocean is a dynamic part of the planet Earth. Another, marine systems are referred to as the world's oceans. Coastal systems is the interface between oceans and land strongly influenced by the marine system. Another, marine and coastal processes include waves, tides, sea level change, storm surge, and crustal movement, which affect the coastal systems. Coastal hazards are physical phenomena that expose the marine environment to risk of property damage, loss of life, and ecological degradation. And the last one, some of the coastal hazards include coastal erosion, submersion, and salt water intrusion. Do you have questions? Clarifications? If there is none, let's go to assessment. Now for the assessment, what I want you to do is to open your modules in hydrometeorological hazards and Marine and Coastal Processes module. For the hydrometeorological hazards, open it to page 9. For Coastal and Marine Processes, open it on page 14. Read the directions carefully and answer the questions given. Put all your answers on your notebook or paper. Wait, there's more. As an additional task, in the page 13 of your module, what I can do? As a senior high school student, how can you help the local government to mitigate the harmful effects of coastal and marine processes such as erosion, submersion, and salt water intrusion, assuming that your community is prone to these coastal hazards. Now let's go back to our objectives, if you were able to achieve it. For the first objectives, identify places in the Philippines that are prone to hydrometeorological hazards. Check. Explain the importance of identifying places that are prone to hydrometeorological hazards. Check. Describe how marine and coastal processes result to coastal hazards. Check. And explain how coastal erosion, submersion, and saltwater intrusion occur. Check. And 
That's the end of our lesson for today. I hope that you learned a lot. See you all next time in our session on the air. Again, this is Teacher Rex saying, Ang sayan-sayang matuto sa radyo pag Radyo Z Skwela ang kasama mo. Goodbye! Radyo Z Skwela Executive Committee The School's Division Superintendent, Yofemia T. Gamutin Seso 5 Assistant School's Division Superintendent, Dr. Romel R. Handayan OIC Curriculum Implementation Division Chief, Karina S. Frasco School Governance and Operations Division Chief, Dr. Roben J. Riponte Members Cecilia Morales Dr. Hilda A. Opeña Dr. Arlene B. Lim Dr. Eldecris B. Calzadora Dr. Dexter A. Sikinia Nohara O. Pinute Noemi P. Canales Dr. Grace D. Pontilias Virgilito C. Pabrises Juanito Lapiceros Engineer Norberto S. Manlangit Jomar M. Dumupoy Bob Dalan S. Milabat Medard T. Ampit and Paz Eugenia Villusino Technical Working Committee Productions and Communications Lorely E. Quijano Given G. Hinampas Judy Land D. U Donna D. T. Bolifer Mary Rose N. Resma Riven Manuel Irene Lea C. Manguhon and Bessie Aya N. Banias Social Media and Packaging Team Christian Anhara L. Martesho William R. Ranara Joan T. Iscoton Roberto S. Acusar Jr. May B. Istanyol Richard H. Arellano Glee L. S. Blanco Ralph A. Tabanyag Angelo Gutierrez Jr. and Jade Karen Araiz